friend with me for coming on and you're up, right? I think everybody can see you. I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. We'll find out here, but I will get a comment here in a section uh, second if I messed up, but I, I see you. So I think we're good to go. Uh, so uh, Father Matthew hosted me this past week. I get, I was, I was there almost a week in Alaska, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, Wednesday through Monday. Okay. So I had two awesome things happen related to you yesterday. The first one was, it was my birthday and you left me nine voicemails. You're welcome. <laughs> which, I, which, <laughs> that my, was awesome. My son, my son and I really enjoyed leaving each and every one. Okay. <laughs> and the second thing is that while I was there, you introduced me to a game that you play with your kids and I've got it right here. And um, we, I think we only played it once or twice. I can't remember. One time, yeah. Yeah, and my daughter had a blast. I had my 11 year old daughter with me, Audrey. She was really nervous. I have to tell you, like when we were gonna play Bible trivia, she was like, I don't know anything. Uh, but she knew more than she expected. which And so it did two things. It gave her some confidence and it gave her desire to learn more about the Bible. So we're going to be talking about games for youth. I have a few things I've done with my kids. I don't know what various things you've done to your kids. This relates back to the family night resource we put out uh, last year on missions and evangelism.com, just different ways to engage with your family. So before we get started, um, I'm going to actually remember, which is rare, that we need to start with a prayer. And so do you mind saying a prayer before we start? I don't mind. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, you came among your disciples and gave them peace. So also come among us and give us peace and give us understanding that we may do your will in all things. For you are holy always, now, and never, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Okay. So before we get into it, I'm going to ask you a trivia question. Okay. Ready? It's from, oh, Old, boy. from the Old Testament. <laughs> Uh, okay. What what two kinds of food were said to be flowing in the promised land? Oh, milk and honey. All right, awesome. All right, uh, I get I get to ask you a question because okay. I've got my game next to me. Okay. All right. How many stones did it take to knock down Goliath? Three. I got it wrong. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> One. Well, I okay. See, this See? is not fair. Because if, a... you're, if you're a Protestant and you grew up watching King David with Richard Gere, you saw him throw sling those stones and miss, you know, but it was only one to the forehead that killed him. Is that what you're talking about? It says, how many did it take to knock down Goliath? I think this is actually a really good example of um, how parents need to have an understanding of what's going on. Right. And then and then also what you can do if if you have a dispute, there is a citation on here. It says first Samuel 17, 48 through 50. Now, this game was made by uh, Protestants. So the citations might be slightly different than what we would find in the Orthodox study Bible. But nevertheless, you can still go there and find the story and see that David took five stones with him, yes, but only needed one to knock right. down Goliath. Yeah, it was one stone that knocked him down. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. Uh, it it's uh, I, I just think that's a perfect example. I wasn't trying to trip you up. No, no, um, it's fine. It's fine. So, um, I have another example of. So, I asked you that first question, which is a really great question for our kids to know about from the Old Testament. But the second question on this card um, would be confusing to all of our faithful. Okay. The, Christ the Christian church has two main branches. One is <laughs> Roman Catholic. What's the other? The answer on the card is Protestant. Yes. But, but so <laughs> uh, I've seen that question. And uh, the first time I read it, I said, what? That's... <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. yeah. The Christian church does not have two main branches. Um, yeah. But it was an opportunity to talk with my kids about the first millennium 
of Christianity and the Great Schism and the Protestant Reformation and some of that. Uh, and even, you know, many churches have the timeline of church history on a brochure or somewhere for their visitors. And I was able to get one of those from my church and show the kids the branches coming out from uh, the the line of orthodoxy and and it help enlighten them. Sometimes, sometimes when children grow up in an orthodox environment, they might not be exposed to Protestantism or Roman Catholicism or things like that. For example, my wife, her the first Protestant service she ever went to was uh, when she was 21 and we went to my cousin's wedding. Mm. Right. So it's not that she was unaware of Protestants or the Protestant Reformation, but the experience was very different for someone who is cradle Orthodox. Yeah. So this game provides those opportunities to uh, go into things that you really wouldn't expect. Right. Okay, so I said that two things happened to me on my birthday. The first one is that you left me nine birthday voicemails yesterday. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I'm so <laughs> proud of that. <laughs> the second thing as a dad was that yesterday I took the risk on my birthday. I sat my family down and we played this game. I ordered it Sunday while we were like, when it wasn't my turn, I went, I went on Amazon and ordered it right away because materialism is awesome. Yeah. No, that's not what I ordered. <laughs> I ordered it right away. I, I didn't care when it showed up, but you know, I ordered it. It showed up Tuesday, and then we played it last night. And my 13-year-old daughter said the same thing that the other one did. I mentioned the 11. And she's like, I'm not gonna know any of the answers. I don't I don't know the Bible. I'm nervous. And so uh I was like, it's my birthday. This is what I want to do. And, they, <laughs> and so they all said, Okay, we'll go play. So we went to the living room, we were comfortable. We got to all sit, you know, in our in our favorite places in the living room and be casual. And we pulled out the game. And my youngest one was excited, you know, because she had played it with you on Sunday. So we pull it out. And like my 13-year-old is like, oh, I know some of these. And she starts getting excited. And she would get really excited if like her brother didn't know it, but she did. You know, like that one was like wonderful. And so by the end of the game, um, I won, you know, I had to answer all the questions on one of these cards. How many is that? That's like seven. Yeah. Seven. Um, yeah. But, my, but my daughter that was really nervous about how much she didn't know, you know, she got second place. And I said, did you have fun? She said, yeah, I had a lot of fun. You know, she's 13 and she already knows things better than I do about life. Right. Like, <laughs> but she had fun. And we talked through some of these questions that were a little confusing. Like, you know, I, you know, I knew it was one stone that killed Goliath, but how many did he throw, right? And that's mm -hmm. not really mentioned. And that's what I was thinking about. But we talked through some of these questions and then they learned like from one question, helped them have the answer for another question. But I was just, you know, I think one of the greatest gifts we can have as parents is when our kids are learning about the faith and having fun at the same time. That's not always possible, but if it is possible, we should do it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we, we had fun. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, there's no contradiction between having fun and learning about the faith. Yeah. Okay. Um, next, next question. You ready? Hold on. Okay. Next trivia question. All right. How many times was Paul shipwrecked? Zero, one, two, three, or five? Uh, I believe the answer is three. Yeah. All, All right. right. And the reason, okay, so I'll be honest, make a public confession. The reason why I know that is because we asked that question Sunday night in my house. <laughs> and I think everybody got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, uh, so, but, and there's a citation there, right? Isn't it from Second yeah, Corinthians? Yeah, yeah. Second Corinthians 11.25. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the nice things is that the answers on the back of these cards, I'll hold it up so that people can see it. I can, can kind of see it. There, so these are answers to questions on the front, but they give the scriptural citation. Most of the time, the <laughs> citation is correct. There have been a couple of times where I went to find something and it was maybe a few verses off. Mm -hmm. um, 
but mm-hmm. uh, there there are lots of things that give good discussion prompts. This is even a game that you can play with Soyo. Yes. Uh, junior Soyo or Teen Soyo uh, and have some fun with it. Uh, for example, why did God tell Abraham to sacrifice Isaac and later allow him not to? Mm. That, that's It's a why question. That's did not that, a, a what That never question. happened. That happened in the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the the answer is to test his obedience. So right there, you've got a reference to Genesis chapter 22. You've got a prompt for a discussion. Why would God do this? That's a higher level critical thinking activity. For my six-year-old, we normally stick to the questions like, who built the ark? Well, right. like, and you have and, to be like, this is a great opportunity because you don't want your kids going, if God tells my parents to kill me, they're going to kill me. <laughs> like, <laughs> we don't need them like worried. <laughs> like, I hope I don't have to be sacrificed. Right, right. No, but no, we, a, re- we reserve that for teenagers. It's just right? teenagers. It's, it's yeah. just teenagers. <laughs> so, no, uh, but, but you see what I'm saying? There's the... Yeah. Lower level questions of, well, Noah built the ark. Although my 10 year old daughter, um, the question was asked, who built the ark? The answer was supposed to be Noah. And my 10 year old daughter answers back, which one? The ark of the covenant or the boat that survived the flood? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so after playing this game, my family received this game several years ago. It was a gift from my mother. So thank you, mom. Appreciate it. And uh, after playing this game, my now 10 year old daughter, um, who was about seven or eight at the time, like your children, wanted to learn more, loved learning more about the stories in the Bible. And we got her a really good children's Bible that my wife had when she was a child. And uh, Hannah started reading it. And now Hannah is, uh, well, I think, she, did, did she win on Sunday? She almost won. I think she might played. have won. Yeah, I think she, she might have won. She, she and I normally go toe to toe. And uh, she she's the one who's asking those questions. Which arc was it? Yeah. Um, so no, my, my daughter was staring at her like she was a prodigy. <laughs> yeah. like it, felt, it felt like your daughter, your 10 year old memorized the Bible. <laughs> That's no, but in reality, she had actually sometimes what she's done is she's pulled out this game and just studied the cards, <laughs> which is what I used to do with trivial pursuit when I was in junior <laughs> high. <laughs> so I could beat my parents at trivial pursuit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this, this game uh, is so good that we passed it on uh, for one of our goddaughters who has a father that's a priest, an uncle who's a priest, and a grandfather who's a priest. So when she got the game, she got on the phone with her family and started playing. Um, so th- this, is, this is a game that I, I would recommend for all Orthodox families. Um, it is helpful for the parents to stay involved with, with the game uh, and, and explain some of the discrepancies that we might have. There's another one that I can think of off the top of my head. The question is, how many angels are mentioned in the Bible? Mm. And, and their answer is three, um, Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. But the orthodox answer would be four because the archangel Raphael is mentioned in the book of Tobit, but that's not included in the Protestant Bibles. Right. So you right. have to, um, you know, if the kids get the answer right, you, you got to at least explain it to them or, or if they get it wrong, you, you, you tell them, well, that's the correct Orthodox answer. So, you know, we'll give it to you. But uh, th- those things are good. It's, it's helpful talking points. Yeah. And what, what my family did is after we got this game, we started reading the Bible more at dinner. 
Yeah. So so if there's a, a question about one of the stories or one of the stories seems interesting, just make a note of it and then and then crack the Bible open and start reading. It's a fun thing to do. Okay, I'm about to share a link uh, to to the game okay. uh, in our comment section. Uh, it's available at Amazon, and it's uh, twenty bucks, nineteen seventy nine right now. It's on Amazon Prime. It's not, you know, um, if you're trying to only like have orthodox things in your home, you're gonna have to make do in America, you know, as, in in the English speaking world because we don't have everything. But I feel like this is so close that it's worth it and it's a teaching opportunity. Um, and so if, it, if, if you're hesitant or you don't like the idea that, you know, uh, it's probably made by a Protestant group, I think um, we're losing the value here of, you know, it, when I think back just in the last two weeks, I mean, just in the last week, the two times that I played this with my daughter and then with my whole family last night, I'm like, I wouldn't trade that. Like that was an amazing birthday present. I'm a deacon in the Orthodox church. And my kids are excited about learning about the Bible. They admit it. I was like, I said, I feel like I want to learn more. And I love reading the Bible. But like, like I'm, I'm, I'm like, and it's competitive, but like it was good. Like you want to learn more. And my kids all agreed. Like, yeah, I want to learn more. And so I ordered a special children's Bible for them. Not kitty. Like it just kind of that that one that you showed with me for Golden Press. Yeah, it, it makes... Um, it makes the stories more accessible yeah and and it simplifies the language just a little bit to do that without mm -hmm. diluting the meaning of the story um, some of the children's bibles out there are just awful with the <laughs> writing they're yeah. just awful yeah. and and i can't stomach it um but there are some good ones the best ones retain as much of the original language from the text as possible but yeah. again making it accessible um and i was thinking you know how old are your children 11 13 and 14. okay that's a those are great ages to start talking about orthodox typology mm. right yeah so we talk about noah's ark and then we talk about the church as the ark of salvation right and and you can do that within this game now your kids might roll their eyes and say can we just keep going you're doing this because you're losing dad <laughs> but again again you think about it within like a teen soil or a junior soil context and you've got all sorts of room to go with some of these discussions and these prompts and and quite frankly with my kids i talk to them about um about orthodox typology uh with a lot of these things they know that um the theotokos is uh a, is represented by the ark of the covenant because it contained the word of god mm -hmm. right um so they they know that a little bit how much they understand the depth of the meaning uh that's not my worry. Um, but this game provides different things uh, like that where parents can can really explore the Orthodox faith and have the scriptural um, reference and context to back it up. Yeah. Uh, the, the Bible we're referencing is uh, from 1965, Golden Press. Um, it was expensive on Amazon. So if you're interested in the same thing for your family, I got it for $5 off of abooks.com. And there were several wow. copies. There was quite a few copies at that price range with free shipping. And I don't know when it's going to get here because I did the media mail. So it's going to get here soon. But uh, my my kids are excited to read this because my son who's 14, he loves the Bible. But there's still some language above his head. Like I still have mm -hmm. to explain some things to him. And so I'm pretty excited about the way this Bible integrates the actual scri scripture into the stories mm -hmm. um, and, and breaks it down in a way that they're going to be able to, um, you know, understand, get some deeper comprehension. So I already got excited. I've already come up with another game that we're going to try. Um, not tonight. Cause we, I have a birthday dinner with my family tonight and they're going to get irritated if I bring this up, even though I really want to, maybe they'll let me. 
I'll see if they let me. But uh, so what I want to do is something similar. Um, and I want to do name that saint. There you go. Right. I mean, and that's kind of. Can you name that saint in three notes or less? <laughs> Name that tone in three notes or less. There you go. Name that tone. Name yeah. that saint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20 yeah. questions with the saints. That, like, I really hope that somebody might be watching this broadcast and be inspired to pursue other forms of Orthodox games. You can take this structure. There are seven different categories mm -hmm. on this uh, card. Yeah, I got them on here. It's Old Testament, history, geography, prophets and miracles, uh, names, mm -hmm. letters, numbers, sequence, New Testament and wisdom. Yep. You can easily come up with seven or eight categories or five categories for Orthodox. Right. Yeah. Saints, um, lit liturgics or something, uh, feasts like th there are a million ways to go with it. Church history. Hold on, um, I, 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 wait, that, it's time for another trivia question. Okay. All right. Uh, what relative was Miriam of Aaron? Oh, they were siblings. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, okay, I got I got one for you, Deacon Adam. <laughs> Whose name means the mother of all living? Uh, Come on, Eve. Deacon Adam. Eve. Good job. <laughs> Good yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to make sure you got that. <laughs> my and I'm frequently reminded reminded that my name means dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so when that's where the phrase came, your your name is mud. That's where it came from. Uh, came from that. That's an old idiom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, old cowboy idiom. Okay. So yeah, name that saint. Uh, I'm pretty excited about doing that game. We have feast days that you can do this trivia with. And I agree. Like, I, you know, we all want some games that are orthodox, but th there's, I think the, I don't even know if it's still in production. There was logos back in the nineties. I, I can't even find know. it on Google. Yeah. I, don't, I think it's probably dead. And um, I, you know, I mean, I've already got like 15 projects I'm working on right now. Should I add this? Make it <laughs> we totally should. How about Orthodox Pictionary? Oh, see, or Orthodox Apples to Apples. I think Orthodox Apples to Apples would be would be awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. See, there's all sorts of things we could do like this. Yeah, but yeah. you can do you can do little versions of this at home. It wouldn't take me long to write up some trivia on saints for my family. Like I'm gonna do this. I mean it. Like we're doing it this weekend. I'm gonna write up some trivia on saints. And I'm going to say, who is the saint that dot, dot, dot. And we're going to go through it and see what they know. And I'm going to find some obscure facts. They don't know this yet. And they don't watch my show because they're related to me about their saints and see if they can come up with, you know, if they can spot who their saint is. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's yeah. a good idea. Also saints in your parish, look around mm -hmm. the church, see what's in your, and, and see, and help them connect deeper with the saints that are already there. Uh, so yeah, yeah this, this is, I, I'm, I'm excited about playing. I love playing games. Yeah. Start with the patron saint of your parish. I mean, yeah. To, yeah. Tomorrow is the feast of St. Herman. He's the patron of our parish. And tonight my family is going to the Akathis that we're doing for St. Herman. And of course the Akathis describes his life. So maybe I'll, I'll drill my kids in the car on the way home with some trivia questions. Uh, so when I was talking to Father Michael Chambor about his children's catechesis, he was saying that he would play games with the kids, like to keep them focused. He would be like, "Okay, I, and he, I'm going to be talking about a topic, and if I say uh, if I ring the bell, the first person to yell spaghetti gets points." And I think that's a brilliant an idea, and I want to like move it a little bit further and be like, you know, the first person that says Pentecost, you know, or the first person that says Theophany, you know, like spaghetti's fun. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Um, but like there's the little things we could do with that, that just kind of tweak it, take these great ideas from people like Father Michael Chambor, who I didn't even have that idea, but I'm like, OK, now we can put that together. And there's lots of great games out there for our youth that we can be doing at home and in our youth groups. Um, I think you said you're going to be doing a junior soyo like and we're doing a junior soyo at our church. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
the junior soil refers to the 10 to 12 year old age. So yeah. we already have that age group and we've got Christian Ed for that age group, but instead of calling it the preteens, yeah. um, we're going to call it junior soil, which sounds better. Although um, my thought is that we might rename it to junior asparagus because it sounds like the character from Veggie Tales. So um, I think that's, but they've got more energy. The boys right. do definitely that age. You got to figure sure. out how to, and you know, and your teenage boys are, it's, it's easier to get them to sit down, relax and, yeah. and, and engage in a game. Um, so I, I just, this was just a reminder that for me that we can have fun and learn about the faith at the same time. It's not yeah. an either or. Absolutely. And it's a really good opportunity to remind everybody that it is the parents job, the family's job to educate the children. The Christian education that we do at the church only happens for in a really good church, like 40 hours a year. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's nothing compared to the time spent at home. Right. So there are lots of different ways to engage in Christian education at home. It doesn't always involve sitting and just reading from the book of Leviticus. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, like parents need to be engaged with this. They need to have fun with it. Um, they need to show their humility and say, yeah, wow, I didn't know that. Okay, let's learn about that. Um, and the kids always enjoy it when they can one up their parents on something anyway. But but you have to be willing to engage. I remind parents in my church all the time. It's your job to educate the children. It's our job at the church to supplement what you're doing at home. Mm -hmm. And we can definitely tell which families are engaged at home and which families just come and drop off their kids at church and say, well, I hope you'll keep them in the church when they're college students. That really doesn't work as well. Yeah. Um, but hey, speaking of college students, this is another game that could be played by college students, you know? Oh, they yeah. Could have a, they could have a lot of fun at OCF yeah. Uh, yeah. playing this game and making it a competition. So, hey, you, here's an idea for college students. Whoever loses, whichever team loses in this game, you can either play individually or with teams. Whoever loses buys the pizza for the night. <laughs> There you go. You're welcome. That's good. I, you know, I'm hoping to have uh, Deacon Merrick on soon. He's the new executive director of OCF. He's living in my hometown. He just moved here. And uh, he's got some great energy and ideas for OCF. And so I'm going to show him uh, this game and say, hey, look, you know, there's got to be a Bible trivia game. You'd be surprised how much fun this is. Oh, yeah. There's, and uh, and we need to. Okay. So. We're going to close out with with final trivia questions and see. I, th I think you're winning. I'm gonna. I think I can tie it up here if I win this one. Okay, but we'll see. So um, you're not going to answer my question correctly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. This these are all easy. Oh, here we go. I'm gonna give you a hard one because I think you know the Bible better than I do. How many sons did Jesse have? It's multiple choice. Oh, don't do you, give me the choices because my kids never do. Oh, do you know? Do you know it? <laughs> uh, I believe I got it wrong last night. Oh, okay, I it, it's I, it's one of two answers. But see, when when I play with my children, they don't allow me to have multiple choices. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, so I believe it's eight. Yeah. Because David ding, ding. had seven brothers. See, yep. it was either seven or eight. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give you a hard one just for fun. <laughs> All right. And, and and just so you know, there's a visiting, there's a priest who came up to my parish in February. He will rename, <clears throat> he will remain nameless right now. Um, but uh, he came up, we played this game for two nights and it was so much fun. So yeah. much fun. Uh, and he really enjoyed the fact that my daughter whooped him. Uh, <laughs> but we were, my kids were giving him and were giving me the really, really hard questions like this. Okay. Spell Nebuchadnezzar. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So in or, the, or, or you can just give up now. <laughs> I'm going to try it. N E B. Okay. Good. E 
Nope. Oh, I already messed you. up. You. <laughs> oh, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, is, is it CH? Um, it's CH, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can. I don't know if I can type it, but uh, uh, I'll try to type it up. But uh, anyway, I'll give you another one that's more reasonable. Okay. I well, um, I lost. I lost though. You're our winner. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Here, here's one. Um, let's see here. Two apostles are named as raising the dead. One was Paul. Name the other. Peter. Ah, good job. All right. Good job. Are we, are we referring to the shadow? When Peter's shadow? Uh, his shadow was healing people. It was healing people. Oh, no. he the guy, Ta when Tabitha. he spoke too long. Didn't no, he like... No, Paul, Paul spoke too long. Okay, Paul spoke the, too long. The kid fell out of the window. Right, and he was like, no, and no, then, no, I'm not done yet. You got to come back to life. Peter raised Tabitha. That's right, okay. Yeah, okay. so... So sometimes we have like an awareness of these things, right. but we don't crystallize it until we put it into this format. Yeah, so it can, it's helpful. It can really help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me out last week in Alaska. We had a blast. Yeah. Um, you've heard me talk about the Pioneers Retreat, and that's what I was there to do. And um, it's as hard as it is, it's equally rewarding, in my opinion. Uh yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah, I've already heard, huh? I've received big thumbs up from awesome. many of the people who attended our retreat. So thank yeah. you very much for coming. It was great to be with you for the weekend and it was very edifying and fruitful for our parish. So we, we thank you for coming and we hope that the Department of Missions and Evangelism can come to another retreat in the near future. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah. My boss needs, my supervisor needs to come out there, Father John Finley. I think yeah. it'd be good for him to come visit. So, okay. Yeah. Well, that's it for today. We we had this one example. I'm going to show it to you one more time. If you didn't, if you're coming in late, children's Bible trivia. Also, it is, here's there's, the old version of, of the box. Yeah. So don't get confused if you order it. I put a link in, in the comment section. Um, it's great. It's not the only Bible trivia out there, but um, I'm having fun with my family. Father Matthew's having fun with his family. They're learning about the Bible. We get to point out some mistakes, you know, such as, you know, the two branches of the, of the Christian church and talk about that. But um, we had fun and we learned about the faith. I mean, I, yeah. it, was a, it was a great birthday. Today is my saint's day. Did you know that? Yeah, because you told me. <laughs> Happy feast day. So, yeah, it's not St. Finnegan of Nausea. That's not his name. His name is Saint Finian of Clenard. And um he's uh he's I, I don't even know what the right word. I you could say muse. He's not really a muse, but um he had about three thousand spiritual children, and uh, but you never really hear about him. And so uh, for me, I really connected with him because I'm always behind the camera and people are watching the movies I'm making. But I'm not in the spotlight, and I don't want to. Be, I don't need to be in the spotlight. I don't want to be in the spotlight. This is about as far as I go as this this show that stories that work. But uh, you know, you know, I can't. I can't emphasize enough that we're we can never spend too much time with our patron saint. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's Absolutely. why that's why I thought of the name name that saint game because I want my kids to really develop a, a relationship with their saint, and I think I've got to help them do that. You know, my wife and I need to help them do that. They're probably not going to do it on their own. Right. Well, when you're ready with that game, uh, my family will be happy to beta test it. Awesome. You. Awesome. Okay. That's it for today. Have a uh, great day and a happy feast. May God grant you many years. Thank you. And uh, don't forget, we're doing mission trips in Pittsburgh. Check out james218.com. We got the parenting conference coming up in February 8th. Uh, that's at orthodoxparenting.com. We have um, the first Orthodox uh, um, Missions and Evangelism Conference for our Antioch and Archdiocese since 2012 coming up in May. You can learn about that at missionsandevangelism.com. So a lot of events happening, a lot that's coming up. I'm going to be doing Bible trivia questions uh, during the break at, uh, at at the Orthodox Parenting Conference. Good. Yeah. <laughs> you should do it at the Missions and Evangelism Conference, too. Oh, that would be fun, too. See what people... Yeah, I'm going to find some good ones for my boss. 
<laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. Every time. Yeah. All right. So uh, thanks for coming on again, Father. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. You too.